Welcome back to our lessons on factors and products. We're going to move on to lesson 3.6, decomposition. So we've been looking at factoring trinomials the regular way and some with common factors. But some of our, polyno our trinomials that we get, we can't use either of those methods. So we need a third method. It doesn't factor regularly and there's no common factor we can pull out. So if we come to that situation, we're going to have to use decomposition. So decomposition are for those polynomials that can't be factored regularly. You're not able to find a common factor, so in that case we have to use this idea of decomposition. Now decomposition will work on any single trinomial you want. You can use decomposition even when regular trinomial factoring works, or even with a common factor. But decomposition has a bunch of steps, so we kind of leave it as our last resort. So what we're going to do is we are going to follow these eight steps as we work through an example. Step one is we take our coefficient of our squared term and multiply it by our constant. So let's run through an example here. Factor the following trinomial, 5a squared plus 9a plus 4. Now we see that we've got a coefficient in front of the a, so regular trinomial factoring is out of the question and there is nothing common to 5, 9, and 4. So, decomposition. Take the coefficient of the squared term and multiply it by the constant. So I'm going to get 5 times 4. So that's 20. Signs are important, so this is positive 20. So step 1, done. Step 2, factor the product. So we come down and our product was 20, so we're going to factor it. I've been talking about factoring as going across the page, going this way, but uh, a little hint here, I believe going down your page for factoring and decomposition makes a little more sense. So what numbers multiply to give you 20? Well, it's 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 3 doesn't go, but we've got 4 and 5. Now it's really important for decomposition to remember your negative versions as well. Negative 4 and negative 5 give me positive 20. Negative 2 and negative 10 give me positive 20. And negative 1 and negative 20 would give me positive 20. So step 2 is done factor the product. Find the factors that when combined, and combined we mean addition, will equal the middle term. So what I'm looking for here is I'm going to add these factors. And what I'm looking for is the answer that's going to add to give me negative or positive 9. So 1 and 20 is 21, 2 and 12, 2 and 10 is 12, 4 and 5 is 9, negative 4 and negative 5 is negative 9, negative 2 and negative 10 is negative 12, negative 1 and negative 20 is negative 21. So which one of these will add together to give me positive 9? Looks like we have winners right here. 4 and 5. So step 3 is done. Step 4. Rewrite your polynomial, expanding the middle term using the factors found above. So we're going to rewrite our middle term so that our middle term is not going to be 9a but it's going to be 4a and 5a. So we get 5a squared plus 4a plus 5a plus 4. So I'm expanding my polynomial. Step 4 is done. So step five, remove the common factor from the first two terms. 
And I'm going to let step 6 at the same time. It says remove the common factor from the last two terms. So what I have to do here is I have to separate my four terms here into the first two and the second two. So what I like to do is actually put brackets and make this into two binomials just so I can get my head around this. So what's common to 5a squared plus 4a? Well, there's nothing common to my numbers, but I do have a common a. So I've got a, and I'm going to pull that out. So that is 5a plus 4. This is just removing an a from the first term and the second term. We've been doing this for a while, so I know that there is no number that I'm pulling out, so I get the 5. But a squared, pulling out an a, gives me a. 4a, 4 stays there, but the a's will catch each other out, giving the 4. On the other side, 5a and 4. Well, there doesn't seem like there's anything that's common with my numbers or my letters. So if there's nothing I can pull out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the number 1 in front of my bracket. 5a plus 4. So when nothing appears common, we'll put a 1 there. Come back up to my steps. Step 5 is done, and step uh, 6 is done. Now we know we're factoring a trinomial, so we will end up with two binomials in the end. We're going to create the first binomial by combining my two removed common factors. So I know I'm going to end up with two binomials in the end. The first one comes from the a I pulled out and the 1 that I pulled out. Remember this is positive 1. Check that off. And you'll notice that the remaining terms inside my brackets are the same. So because they're the same, in this case it's 5a plus 4, 5a plus 4, they become my second binomial. So the factors I pulled out became the first binomial. The factors that remained the same became the second. So we get an answer of a plus 1 times 5a plus 4. Now a couple things to notice here. If when you pull out your common factors you don't have the same binomial left over, well then you've probably done something wrong. So that's one of my very first checks. Is this the same? You bet it is. So I'm probably on the right track here. Let's do a quick check. Well, what's my check? Well my check is FOIL. Do I multiply this through to get my original question? So FOIL means first. a times 5a is 5a squared. Outside a times 4 is positive 4a. Inside 1 times 5a is positive 5a. And last 1 times 4 is plus 4. I combine my two inside terms and I get 5a squared plus 9a plus 4 and yes that was my original trinomial so it looks like I did things right. Okay let's move on to our second example. Factor the following trinomial 3n squared plus 23n plus 14 so again, regular trinomial factoring, it's not going to work. There's a 3 in front. Common factor, 3, 23, 14, no common factor. So we use decomposition. Start by doing the coefficient of my squared term times the constant, which is 14. 3 times 14 gives me 42. So I list all my factors of 42. I get 1 and 42. 2 and 21. 3 and 14. I'm sorry, 3 and 21. 
no, sorry, 314, 6 and 7, and of course my negatives, negative 6, negative 7, negative 3, negative 14, negative 2, negative 21, negative 1, negative 42. So now we're going to add these together and we're looking for an answer of 23. So 1 and 42 is 43. 2 and 21 is 23. And I've got it right here. 2 and 21 become my correct factors. I could continue adding on if I want, but I've already found the numbers, so I'm good to go. Rewrite this, expanding that middle term. 3 n squared plus 2n plus 21n plus 14. Looks good. Let's split this into my first two and my second two. Looking at the first two, what's common? There's no numbers, but I do have an n that's common. So I'll pull up my n, giving me 3n plus 2. In my second pairing, 21 and 14, I know I've got a common 7. No letters, so I've got 21 by 7 is 3n. 14 by 7 is positive 2. Look at my quick check, 3n plus 2, 3n plus 2, I think I'm on the right track here. So my first binomial come from my pulled out factors, n and positive 7. And my second binomial comes from my matching pair, 3n plus 2. So, factoring 3n squared plus 23n plus 14, n plus 7, 3n plus 2. So decomposition has a few steps, takes a little longer, but it will get you the right answer every single time. So let's go to our textbook. We can go on page 178, and there are specific questions I'd like you to try here. I'd like you to look at 14, 15, 18, and 19. Give those a try and we'll come back for our next lesson.